Hello ladies and gentlemen. So while I was running a few errands today, I decided I would give you a update on my Suzuki V-Strom XT, which has just gone over 10,000 kilometers. I bought it in January 2019. Okay, I'll admit 10,000 kilometers in a year and nine months is not an awful lot, that's true. However, there are extenuating circumstances. The day I picked it up is when the cataclysmic flooding that Townsville experienced last year happened, which meant I could barely ride it for the first month I got it. And then, of course, there's the whole COVID thing which has put the kibosh on a lot of things this year. Well, yes, I have. I have put a windscreen extender which I bought for 30 bucks on eBay, which has worked an absolute treat. The stock windscreen on this, especially if you're tall, isn't much use. I have also put some 25mm bar risers on it. I have put a foot peg lowering kit which brings them down and forward by 25mm. All of which have made the bike a lot more comfortable for me. I also have a Shad 39 litre top box on her. And I have some Andy Straps luggage racks with soft luggage which were expensive, however, excellent quality and one of the better purchases I've made for it and I would recommend that highly. Links for everything are in the description. Oh, I also have raised the stock seat height. I got a Suzuki Genuine raised seat, which increases the seat height by 25 millimeters. Well, this version is the Lambs slash A2 restricted version, which is limited to 47 horsepower. The torque figure is exactly the same though, which is good. But if I may be, I suppose, blunt about it, no, it's not particularly fast. That said, it will fly ahead of the traffic at the lights. It'll cruise comfortably on highways at 100, 110, 120 all day. With lots of room left for overtaking, so it's certainly quick enough for what I need it to do. Yeah, it is pretty comfortable. At the end of the day, it is an adventure touring bike. It has a big squidgy seat. I'm quite a tall chap though, so from stock, I had to do maybe one or two things just to make it a little bit co more comfortable for myself. So it does require a little bit of modification. Yes, I have taken it off-road, well, you know, on dirt roads and tracks and all that, many times. It's been pretty good. The only major quibble I would have with it is that it does not have ABS that you can switch off. And I'm still on the stock tires, which aren't exactly brilliant off-road. I'll say one thing for them, though, they bloody last. They still look new. I'm going to have to wear them out a bit faster so I can get decent tyres. Anyway, here's a montage of me taking it on dirt roads. Ooh, we have a creek. Any water in us? No. Excellent. Boulders. Well, it's not boulders, but I wouldn't want to go into any of them at speed. Whoa. Not quite sure which way I was meant to go there. We'll just go over the rocks. Hope I didn't get a puncture. Hang on, is it improving here? Yes, it is. All right, it was just a short stretch. We'll go on another bit. Yes, I know I was on the wrong side of the road. That's where the cleanest bit of path was. So that's the route I took. 
Yes, it is actually quite a good laugh on a twisty road. The handling is very sure-footed and predictable. And that blue Mazda has no indicators. Nor does that... Oh, for God's sake. Right. But yes, the handling is really, really good. Predictable. It feels very light once you get it up and going, which is no mean feat for what is quite a heavy bike. It weighs about 220 kilos wet. So it isn't, it isn't a tiddler. And it's, you know, certainly no sports bike, but you will definitely have good fun on it on a windy mountain country road. Yeah, that was good. Whew, that's fun. A bit more of a lean than I normally do. Must be getting brave, lads. Yes, I have taken long trips in it. Most notably out to West Queensland about this time last year. I will link the playlist to those videos in the description if you're interested. And if you ask me, they're very good and you should watch them. Needless to say, the Strom handled itself with a plum. It's what it's designed to do, I guess, isn't it? No mechanical issues whatsoever. It's a V Strom. They have a well deserved reputation for being utterly bulletproof, and this one has proved to be no exception from that rule. It has been excellent. The only minor annoyance I've had with it is that the brakes squeak a bit. I can put up with that though. If you're into middle-aged white dudes, then yes, you'll have no problem getting attention from those types. I have yet to see anyone riding a V-Strom that isn't a middle-aged white dude. So if that's your thing, you're golden. Otherwise, no. Yes. Yes, I do like the V-Strom. I like it very much. It is an extremely competent motorcycle that can do a little bit of everything. Things I don't like about it, not a whole lot really. I find it's maybe a little bit clinical in that, you know, it's not a bike that you buy based on emotion. You buy it because it's a sensible thing to buy. It's kind of like a Toyota, if you know what I mean. You know it's going to be good at everything, but it's never going to you know, make you all excited, if that makes sense. Another thing I don't particularly like about it is the instrument cluster, which is a bit fussy and kind of a dog's breakfast. It has all the information you could possibly want in it. It's just, like I said, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing of things. Otherwise, I don't really have much bad to say about it at all. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you enjoyed and if you are in the market for a V-Strom, I hope this information helps you. Anyway, good luck!